So you want to make ragdolls, right? Whether you're trying to simulate a realistic death, make a goofy game, or you just really enjoy watching those lifeless corpses flop around, you've come to the right place. Now, hold on. Aren't you the same guy that made a ragdoll tutorial? I don't know. Two years ago? Well, yes, I did. And to be honest, it wasn't that great, or at least as great as I thought it was. And my method in making ragdolls has actually changed a lot since then. And that change is exactly what we will be covering in today's video. Now, look, I am no stranger to coding tutorials on the internet. I know that you want ragdolls, and I know that you want them fast. And by the end of this video, you will get them. But there are some key concepts that I actually need you all to understand before we get into making ragdolls, because I want you all to actually be more familiar with the Roblox engine itself rather than just, you know, blindly copying and pasting code because, well, you could do that and it would work, but as soon as something breaks, you really don't have any good way of fixing it unless you just like, I don't know, use ChatGPT or ask a friend for help or something. But besides that, let me show you all how Roblox ragdolls work. This is my Roblox character, Shopkeeper. Shopkeeper has six separate limbs, the head, torso, two arms, and two legs. Additionally, he has a humanoid root part, which will be explained later. If you've ever looked around inside the Explorer menu, and opened up the torso, you may have noticed these weird looking links. If we take a look, we can see that this is called a Motor 6D. A Motor 6D is a type of joint. A joint is a Roblox instance that links two parts together. The Roblox engine has many different types of joints. However, we will only be focusing on three today. In the case of a Motor 6D, it is a rigid joint that can be animated. If we were to delete Shopkeeper's Motor 6D joints, most of them would actually have no effect on Shopkeeper, except for two. The first of them being a Motor 60 named Neck. When the Neck joint is destroyed, it will kill the player. This is very important information that will be touched on later. The other Motor 60 is known as the Root Joint. It is the only joint in the character that is not a part of the torso. Instead, it is held in the humanoid root part. Deleting the root joint will cause a bunch of weird behavior, so avoid doing it. That being said, I've mentioned the humanoid root part twice now, but what is it? Well, if we look at the name, that alone actually tells us almost everything we need to know. We know that it is the root part, which basically means that it's the core of the shopkeeper, and humanoid, which means it is closely related to the character's humanoid. But Liam, what is a humanoid? A humanoid is like the heart of a Roblox character. Without a humanoid, a character is just a model. The humanoid keeps things like the player's health, jump height, and walk speed. It also allows the player to move and do other things. Now, if we want to create a ragdoll, we will need to temporarily disable all of Shopkeeper's Motor 6Ds, excluding the root joint, and replace them with another joint called the Ball Socket Constraint. This joint is what allows the limbs to flop around due to it simulating a literal ball and socket, something that the shoulders and hips in a real human body actually have. But what if you want your ragdoll's neck to flail around? That would require disabling the neck motor 6D, which as I mentioned before, would kill the player. The solution is actually found in the shopkeeper's humanoid. If we disable a property called requires neck, then the humanoid will no longer die when disabling the neck. But there's still a problem. If the shopkeeper dies, then all the joints within him will be broken. How can we stop this? Well, luckily, the humanoid contains another property called break joints on death, which can be disabled, therefore fixing the problem. So to summarize, we will have a character whose joints are replaced with ball socket constraints. But there is still a huge problem. The player will continue to stand up. To prevent this, we can enable another humanoid property called platform stand. This is a property that pretty much just disables the player's movement and puts your player into a physics state. Now, there is only one more problem. The limbs don't seem to have any collision. To solve this, we can just create collision parts in the limbs and weld them to the character. A weld is the last type of joint I want to talk about. A weld is basically a motor 6D that cannot be animated. And that's all the theory behind it. I know it sounds like a lot, and it can be especially overwhelming if you're a beginner. But don't worry, 
If you're still confused on the procedure, or you don't feel like you're ready to code it on your own, I will show you the procedure that I use to make ragdolls in my game, Devil Battlegrounds. By the way, you should totally check out the devlogs I've made for it. Alright, so here we have the actual production code I use in my game, Devil Battlegrounds, for making ragdolls. Now, a few things to note before I start reviewing this code. First, if you're like the 12 year old watching this video, I'm just gonna say it now. Don't try and copy all of this code one for one because you have things here like ragdoll service, knit get service. This isn't gonna work if you decide to just copy and paste literally everything. So I'm just warning you now, don't try it. But anyways, I will show you what all of these functions do. Now you'd probably think that I'd start here on this ragdoll character function, but no. The whole ragdoll process actually begins before this. So this is it, knit in it. You don't really have to worry about in it. This just means that this function will run as soon as the script runs. But basically we have two events here, one for players and one for NPCs. And when their character is added to the game, we run two functions, set up humanoid, and build collision parts. Now, obviously, you guys aren't gonna have an NPC added function or some NPC service unless you've made one, but what I'm basically trying to say here is that you need to call these two functions on any character that you actually intend to ragdoll. Looking at setup humanoid, it's a very simple function. We just only have two things here. First, we're going to disable the break joints on death property, which I mentioned earlier in my explanation, as well as the requires neck property, which again, I explained earlier. Then we have the other function, which is a little more important, build collision parts. This code is only run once on the character initialization. And basically what it does is it copies all of the visible limbs, sets their size to one by one by one, and it welds them to the original limb. They will remain collisionless until the player is ragdolled. But otherwise, they're just the reason that ragdolls have collision in general. Now we can move on to the most important function here, the ragdoll character function. So ignoring this, we just have some basic variable declarations. And the real meat and potatoes are these three functions right here. Enable motor 6D, build joints, and enable collision parts. Another thing to note is the code right here. We have these three lines, and they're pretty important. I discussed platform stand earlier, but what auto-rotate does is it makes it so you can't rotate the character, even if you're in shift lock while ragdolled. We also have set network owner, which, if you don't know what network ownership is, I recommend you do some research on that. But basically, we just need to call that. And then we also have this ragdoll function here, and this, all this does is this. However, we call it on the client because of network ownership. It's just a whole deal. Just remember to do this because it's important. So here we have the first important function, enable motor 60. In this case, we're gonna actually be disabling the motor 60s, but all this does is it loops through all the motor 60s besides any tool handle, the root joint and the neck and it'll either enable or disable them. I also have this code here which sets collision groups, but that's not necessary. It's just, I was too lazy to put this in its own function. Then we have build joints. This is the function that creates the ball socket constraints. It's a little more complicated as we're dealing with another file here, but basically we're just creating two attachments and a ball socket constraint. Mine is grabbed from a specific folder in my project, but you could just pretend it's a normal ball socket constraint. We then just set the name in parent like normal, but the interesting part is this ragdoll data here. So what this is, is I have a separate file which contains all of the C-frame offsets that you will need for your attachments. If you want to copy mine, then go ahead because it's kind of a pain to just get these normally. Another really important thing to note is that the second attachment is parented to the humanoid root part and not the torso. Please, please, please make sure that you do this because if you were to parent it to the torso, it would just cause problems. It would look weird. 
because of like Roblox lag. And look, I spent a week trying to figure out why that was happening, why that lag was happening. And it was because of this line of code right here. So please set the parent to the humanoid root part. And then we have enable collision parts, which basically goes through all the collision parts that we made earlier and enables or disables them. Okay, now we have unragdoll character and you won't believe it, but it's basically pretty much the exact same thing in reverse. So here we have the same thing that we kind of had on the ragdoll function. However, it was under the three important functions. And what this does is it disables platform stand and we also just set the character state to getting up. I don't know if you really need to do this, but I did. And we're also going to avoid doing this uh, if the player is dead, because otherwise I think it throws an error message. And again, remember to set the network ownership to null if it's an NPC. And of course, if it's a player, then we're going to run all of this code, uh, more so all of this code on the client. And then we're also going to re-enable auto-rotate. And here is our three important functions, two of which we already reviewed, these two. All that's left is destroy joints. So looking at destroy joints, it literally just loops through our entire character and it looks for the ragdoll attachment and ragdoll constraint. You could probably just use collection service rather than naming them like this, but I didn't really know that, so yeah. And then we are going to destroy the joint or attachment. And yeah. That's basically all there is to it. I just want to say guys, thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you found it helpful because honestly for me, ragdolls were kind of something that I struggled with, and I didn't really want you guys all to waste too much time on making ragdolls, so I made this tutorial, and I hope that it was easy to digest. So if you enjoyed, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and if you need more help, then consider joining my Discord server, which will be linked in the description. But besides that, I'll see you all in my next devlog for Devil Battlegrounds.